Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number 12 from the January 2014 International A Level Core Mathematics C4 paper. This question is to do with volumes of revolution and, as such, is uh, related to the P4 material and the new specification. So, here we've got this um, graph that's shown. It says figure four shows a sketch of the part of a curve with the equation y equals x times in brackets sine x plus cosine x and um, x is between 0 and pi over 4. The finite region R shown shaded in figure 4 is bounded by the curve, by the x-axis and by the line x equals pi over 4. The shaded region is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis to form a solid of revolution with volume V. Um, assuming that the formula for volume of revolution, or assuming the formula for volume of revolution, show that v equals the integral between zero and pi over four of pi x squared times one plus sine two x with respect to x. So now we have to basically take this two-dimensional area and rotate it around the axis, the x-axis. Rotate it, it kind of like wraps around the x-axis. So it comes like outside of the page. And it goes all the way down, and it goes back inside of the page all the way around until it's made a whole revolution. It's like this thing has become three-dimensional. You can think of it like this, as if like you've taken the shape and rotated it all the way around the x-axis. And it's made a complete revolution until it went back to there again. All right. So basically this shape here, this shape here is three-dimensional shape. It kind of like looks like a weird type of cone with these curved edges. All right, now, we want to find the volume of this. Okay, so to find the volume of this, we consider just a small little section of it. So small that its width is negligible. It's like a, you know, it, make, it makes it basically a little cylinder. Okay, so you have this little cylinder in here. And the cylinder has a width that is really so small it's negligible as i said and that width is called some little value of x dx little part of x so dx and you could say that the radius of the cylinder would therefore be this length here which is y that's how far this is up from there that's the length of that line that's going across so that would be y that's dx and that's y and we know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h so in this case r is y and h is dx so the volume of this little cylinder here will be pi times y squared times dx. And we want to find the, the, you know, the volume of all the cylinders that you can form these little cylinders all the way from here to the end, from, from 0 to pi over 4. This is pi over 4. Okay, so if we integrate between 0 and pi over 4, um, all of those, find the integral of all of those cylinders, pi y squared dx. Okay, that will give us the sum of all the volumes of all those cylinders from all the way from there to there. Okay, so this is where the, this is where the volume of revolution comes from. From this basically adding together the volume of all these little cylinders from the beginning to the end. That's this formula that we have to know about volume of revolution, pi y squared dx. That's where it comes from, okay? Many, many people just memorize without understanding where it comes from, but that is where it comes from. Okay, so now we know um, that y is equal to x times sine x plus cosine x. So I'm going to replace the y with x bracket sine x plus cosine x. So I'll say v equals 0 to pi over 4 pi times x times x, sorry, x times was it cosine x? Sine x plus cosine x, yeah. X times sine x. So I can just write it as pi x here. I don't have to put this other, other bracket. So pi times x. So I've got pi times x times sine x plus cosine x dx. Okay, because we know that y is equal to x times sine x plus cosine x, as they told us. So pi times, this is pi times y. Now this has to be squared. Pi times y squared dx. 
So this is y, this has to be squared. So pi times y squared dx. Okay, now when you simplify this, you got 0 and pi over 4, you have pi. And then this is going to give you x squared times, now this is going to give us sine squared x, plus, when you square this bracket, you'll have, um, remember it will be sine x plus cosine x times itself, so you'll end up with 2 sine x cosine x, remember the pattern of squaring a bra um, square bracket, square the first term, multiply them together, and then double it, so 2 sine x cosine x, plus square the last term, cosine squared x, okay, um, dx. All right, now, we can simplify these because I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So those two will add up to 1. So I've got v equals between pi over 4 and 0 pi times. I have x squared. I don't need the bracket now. Pi times x squared. And this will be sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x remember the sine of 2x using the double angle formula is 2 sine x cosine x so i can go this way i can re rewrite this as sine of 2x which is what we have to do here because that's what they've given us all right so you got 1 plus the sine of 2x dx now what i'm going to do is because the question already gave us the answer. I'm going to just make sure that I, I'm, I show all the steps very clearly. So even though what I wrote I think would be fine, just to be sure, okay, you could just make sure by writing this as, for example, um, sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus, and then you can write this as sine 2x dx, and then you can say that's equal to 1. So v equals between 0 and pi over 4. Pi times x squared times 1 plus sine of 2x dx. Just to be you know, sure that you get the answer. Although what I wrote before was fine. So you can see we got exactly what we're supposed to show. And that's part A. Now for part B. It says hence using calculus find the exact value of v. So we have to basically integrate what they gave us. So we've got the integral of, I like to write the constant outside, so I'll put pi outside between pi over 4 and 0 of x squared times 1 plus sine of 2x with respect to x. Now we've got two choices here. I could treat that as a product and that as a product, two separate products, and use the, the um, integration by parts, which I'll have to do in, in either case. But um, if I use integration by parts, and leave it like this, then this will have to be u, and this will have to be v. When I integrate that, it's going to become a bit more complicated. You're going to have to integrate, you'll have x plus, and then you'll have, you know, you're going to integrate that as well. You're going to get two terms. It might get a bit complicated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take them separately in terms of I can expand the bracket. So I'll have pi over 4, 0. This will be x squared plus x squared times sine of 2x with respect to x, which is the same as saying the integral um, pi times the integral of x squared with respect to x between pi over 4 and 0, plus the integral, plus the pi times again, the integral of x squared times sine of 2x with respect to x, between pi over 4 and 0. In fact, I could even take that pi outside the whole thing and multiply all of that by pi. Okay, and that would give me the same answer. And it might be a bit simpler to deal with. So let me deal with the first part. Let me deal with the integral of x squared with respect to x between pi over 4 and 0 first. Now that's pretty simple. That becomes x cubed over 3, and I have between pi over 4 and 0, that gives me pi over 4 cubed, which is pi cubed over 64 times 3, which is 180, 192. So pi cubed divided by 192, let me just check that. 
Let's do 64 times 3. 64 times 3. Yeah, 192, that's right. So that's the integral of that section. Remember, I have to, I have to multiply in the n by pi. So let me make that a bit clearer because it's very easy to forget that. So I'm going to have pi times all of this. So I've got that part done. Now I'm going to deal with this part here. So now I'm going to deal with um, between pi over 4 and 0 of x squared times sine 2x with respect to x. Now for here, I have to use uh, integration by parts. So one part I have to call u, and the other part I have to call dv dx. The u part has to be differentiated to give me du dx, and the v part has to be integrated to give me v. All right, so now, the part that we're going to call u is a part that breaks down to something simpler. If I call, for example, u sine 2x, if I, if I differentiate it, it's just going to become like, you know, um, 2 times cosine 2x. So it hasn't really become simpler. But if I have x squared as u and I differentiate it, it becomes something, it's breaking down now. It's starting to get, some, get less complicated. It becomes 2x. So that's the way to deal with a question like that. And the sine 2x has to be integrated. And when you integrate sine of something, it becomes negative cosine of the same thing divided by the differential of what's inside the function. I'm not going to bother with plus c's and stuff until the end. So now, to integrate this, we're going to have the limits between pi over 4 and 0. And we're going to multiply these two together. So we have x squared times minus cosine 2x over 2. So it's minus x squared times cosine 2x over 2. Okay, and then I'm going to take away these two multiplied. Now, when I multiply the, the integral of these two multiplied, sorry, when, I'm, when I uh, multiply these two together, I'm going to get the twos cancelling out. You're going to get a minus, so that's going to become a plus here because you have minus times minus. The twos cancel out. You're left with x times cosine 2x dx. All right, now, we still got the integral here, but again, the, we can use integration by parts a second time, and this will now break down. So we have u is equal to x this time, and dv dx this time is equal to cosine of 2x. So here du dx is going to be 1, and here v is going to be, when you, did, when you integrate cosine 2x, you get sine of 2x divided by 2. Okay, so now we've got here so far, between pi over 4 and 0, we haven't quite finished. In fact, I, don't put, I shouldn't put this here anymore. I don't put that here anymore there because we've already integrated this part of it. Okay, I'll leave it like this for now. We don't put the integral here because we've integrated this part already. The integral just goes in that part, so I shouldn't have written that from the beginning there. Please excuse me for that. Okay, I, I just write the integral in the part that needs to be integrated. In the end, I'm going to, I can put the limits here, pi over 4 and 0. That's the limits for the whole thing. So this gives me minus x squared times cosine of 2x over 2 plus, and now I, I can um, use this. So I'm going to have this times that, which will be x times sine of 2x over 2. Okay, minus the integral of these two multiplied, which is going to be a half times sine of 2x dx. I've just taken the half outside. Okay, so you're going to have this times that minus integral of this times that. x, and this is with respect to x, yes. Okay, so now we're almost there. We, this, this thing will integrate, and we won't have another integration by parts. This can be integrated directly so we're almost finished with this section so you got minus x squared cosine 2x over 2 plus x times the sine of 2x over 2 minus a half times when you integrate sine 2x you're going to get minus cosine 2x divided by 2 and we have our limits between this is pi over 4 and 0 so now we can find out what this is going to equal um, let me just simplify it first. Minus x squared cosine 2x over 2 plus x times sine of 2x over 2 
plus a quarter, or you can say you can say cosine two x over four plus, and you've got pi over four and zero. So let's substitute these values in. You're going to have minus. There's going to be pi squared over eight, so minus pi squared over eight times the cosine of two times pi over four, which is pi over two plus and you have uh, pi over actually this is going to be pi over pi squared over 16 isn't it sorry in fact this thing whole is going to become zero anyway but just because that's going to be pi squared over it's going to be this four is going to be squared as well so it'll be pi squared over 16 divided by 2 which is pi squared over 32 and this will be pi over 4 divided by 2 which is pi over 8 times the sine of 2 times um, pi over 4 which is pi over 2 plus cosine of uh, pi over 2 divided by 4 minus, now we're going to put 0 into these two, and put 0 into here it becomes 0, put 0 into here it also becomes 0, I'm left with cosine of 2 times 0 which is 0 over 4, and cosine of 0 is actually equal to 1, so that, that doesn't become 0 that part, so this gives me now cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that whole thing becomes 0, as is this, because cosine of 90 is equal to 0. So you're left with pi over 8, okay, times sine, um, well, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's pi over 8 minus, and this is going to be uh, 1 over 4. Okay, so therefore we can say now our volume is going to be, so we worked out what this is now, this part gives us, pi over 8 minus a quarter so this is now become pi over 8 minus a quarter so what we have to do is we've got to do pi times this plus this okay so the volume therefore is going to be pi times you're going to have um, this answer which is pi cubed over 192 pi cubed over 192 and you've got to also add to it um, the integral of this, which is pi over 8 minus a quarter. So plus pi over 8 minus a quarter. So we can say that our answer, if you want, in the end is pi to the power 4 over 192 plus pi squared over 8 minus pi over 4. And this is units cubed. Okay, you can say units cubed cubic units okay so that's the volume of revolution of this shape okay a bit complicated here with all of this uh, integration here but you just got to um, bear with it and just try to be as logical as you can this integration of our parts took a few steps for you to finish it okay um about the end a lot of the answer a lot of the parts became zero because it was you know you had to substitute zero into this second part and here you know, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so these two disappeared. So it became a bit simple in the end. So that's the answer to question number 9, oh, sorry, number 12, actually, from January 2014, um, C34. This question is all about volumes of revolution. And um, if you would like to see uh, other questions from this paper, you can click on the link in this area over here. You want to see other questions to do with volumes of uh, revolution and integration, you can find that in this link over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.